On today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, let's explore some Bears trade candidates as we are heading into training camp. I think these five names are guys that could conceivably be on the move between now and week one as teams start to trim down their roster. So keep that in mind. My name is Harrison Graham. Let's dive on in here. Number one, a name that's been speculated a lot this offseason as a potential trade chip, that is running back Khalil Herbert, who, again, I, I don't want it to, anyone to get twisted. He's a good player. Like, teams will want Herbert. This isn't one of those where it's like the Dolphins do you a favor by trading for Claypool last year because no one wants him, but they're just taking a chance. Hey, we'll swap late-round picks. Like, this is like a good running back. I would say he's a fringe starter. He would start for a few teams. Obviously, the Bears tried to give him that role last year, and I think he's his best role is as a change of pick number, pace number two, but like – a big role as a number two back in an offense. Like, he he absolutely is proving he could do that. I mean, you look at his three years in the NFL, as a rookie sixth-round pick, he rushed for over 430 yards. Um, his second year, he led the NFL in yards per carry among running backs, among qualified rushers, at 5.7. And last year, um, you know, he missed five games with a high ankle sprain. He still rushed for over 600 yards. Like, if he was healthy, he probably would have had a 1,000-yard year. Uh, again, I think he's better suited – as that number two guy, which is why I'm absolutely down to keep him, and I've said I would be down to keep him. But I also know that the Bears really like Roshan Johnson, and when they drafted him, they were very high on him. Do you want him to be your RB3 for a second straight year? I think it comes down to this. It's competition, right? Can Roshan beat him out? Or at least play even with him in camp? And if the Bears sit there and say, hey, we're comfortable with Roshan as RB2, well, then maybe you – Listen to some calls, see if a contender loses it back and wants to add someone like Khalil Herbert. And if you can get a decent pick, again, I wouldn't trade him for a seventh, but if it's a sixth or better, certainly a fifth or better, I would be interested at that point. Because at the end of the day, Roshan has three years left on his deal, Khalil has one, and you signed DeAndre Swift for a reason. Herbert's not going to be the starter here, so uh, you got to keep that in mind. These are five teams right now that I think would be potential Herbert fits. The Cowboys really stand out. They have Rico Dowdle and Zeke Elliott. I think Herbert could start there. I really do. The Raiders have Zamir White and a bunch of nobodies. The Chiefs have Isaiah Pacheco, who's their starter, but I think Herbert would be a good change of pace back for them as their number two. Clyde edwards alaire is their number two right now. He stinks. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, good. Travis Etienne's a good player, but their depth is questionable. Tank Bigsby's just okay. Cincinnati lost Joe Mixon. They signed Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss and Khalil Herbert are similar caliber backs, so he could certainly be in that rotation there. Uh, for the most part, those teams are contenders too outside of the Raiders. So, um, you know, those could all be teams that could take him. And, again, I'm not actively shopping him right now, but if Roshan beats him out or if it's very close and Roshan's ready to be RB2, well, you've got him for three more years. you got Herbert for one. You're probably not re-signing Herbert, so if you can get something for him – that's at least something you have to consider. So hypothetical, if Roshan wins the RB2 job, again, he's got to go out there and prove it. Would you trade Khalil Herbert in that scenario? Because if Herbert's the clear RB2, I would just keep him. Type T for trade, or you would, or type K for keep, you would keep him as RB3. Let me know in the comments. Um, if he's clearly your RB3 and you can get a fifth or sixth form, I think at that point you have to consider it. All right, Valus Jones Jr., no surprise here. Um, you know, some would ask if he has trade value. The honest answer is I don't know. Um, but this new kickoff rule certainly helps uh, him have some value, not only for the Bears, but potentially other teams. And look, if Valus is going to be on this football team, he's going to have to earn a spot. He's fighting for, at best, our wide receiver four because DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze are penciled in as your top three guys unless one of them has a season-ending injury. Um, so will he stay or will he go? Well, you got Tyler Scott in the mix, DeAndre Carter. Um, the Bears have hyped up Bayless's value as a kick returner. Matt Eberflus said it's like a train running through you when he returns kick. So uh, I know Richard Hightower would like to keep him as a kick returner as well, but he's going to have to earn a roster spot. Like It can't just be, well, he can return kicks, but he doesn't do anything else. Like He's going to have to provide value elsewhere. Otherwise, they could try to dangle him in a trade. You're not going to get a ton for him, but uh, I could see that happening, especially now that they've added DeAndre Carter. Larry Borum, the offensive lineman here, and um, some of this is just 
his, uh, his own doing because he reached a performance escalator uh, in terms of games played and other metrics. So his cap hit went up this year, and the Bear that actually has hurt his chances of making the roster because the Bears could just keep someone else who's cheaper. I'll explain further in a second, but he's got no chance of starting. We know that. And I don't even think he's your sixth or seventh offensive lineman because whoever doesn't start at center, Shelton or Bates, that's a top interior backup. Um, you drafted Karan Amagaji. He's not going anywhere, so that's seven. Matt Pryor, who's very similar profile-wise to Borum, more of a tackle but can also play guard like Borum. He makes a third of what Borum does. He makes a million bucks. Borum, if you cut or trade him, uh, would save you $3.1 million. So him reaching that escalator to elevate his cap it and his potential earnings actually hurts his chances of making this team. But he has value, I think. And offensive linemen always go down in camp and in the preseason. In three years, he's played in 39 games, and he started 23, both at tackle and guard, and he could play on the left and right side. Like, that is a roster spot in this league. So even if the Bears don't have a spot for him um, – Someone will, and I know a lot of you guys will be like, well, you keep questioning the Bears' offensive linemen. Why would you trade one of them? Well, the interesting part about the Bears' line is the depth is actually pretty deep now. It's just a couple of the starting spots I have questions about. So, you know, Borum, do you want to save $3.1 million, or do you want to keep him as your eighth or ninth offensive lineman? If Matt Pryor can do the same thing for a third of the cost and you could trade Borum or even just cut him to save the money – Harsh business, but that's life, man. Like I, I think, uh, I think he'd be a guy late in camp if a team has an injury. Hey, we got Larry Borum. He could be your swing tackle. Can play some guard as well. Throw us a seventh round pick. Certainly see uh, Ryan Poles doing that. Make sure you lock us in at Chicago Bears now. Subscribe. Turn on notifications if the Bears make a move, like cut somebody, trade somebody, sign somebody, trade for somebody. We of course will make a video, and if it's a big enough move, we'll go live. Subscribe today. YouTube.com/slash Bears now. We got Caleb Williams jerseys available as well. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. Click and shop today. That link will be in the comments and in the description. Plenty of these are available. Took a while, but they are available. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. That link will be in the comments and in the description. Navy, whites, orange, some throwbacks available. Get going. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. All right, a couple more here. Dominique Robinson. Full disclosure. No clue if anybody would take him. Um, he feels more like a cut candidate, but there were reports coming out of the spring, coming out of minicamp, that he's bulked up, he looks stronger, he looks bigger. Remember, this is a guy who, when the Bears drafted him, had only he went to college as a receiver and switched to edge rusher like his last two years. So like they drafted a raw athlete with upside but very limited experience at the position. Um, I'll never forget his first game. He had one and a half sacks against Trent Williams in a downpour at Soldier Field, and he has half a sack since. So he just hasn't done much. But where is he? Like, where is his 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 spot on this defensive line? Like, he's behind Montez Sweat. He's behind Demarcus Walker. They just drafted Austin Booker. So even if he's further along, they're not cutting Booker. So at best, he's your fourth guy. Jacob Martin is someone that Montez Sweat pointed out, so he's probably ahead of Domarov. We know the Bears like Khalid Kareem. They brought him in last year. He's somewhere between edge four and six. And, by the way, the Bears may sign a pass rusher. They probably will. 42 tackles and two sacks in two seasons. He's been inactive for several games as well, um, which is why, look, he may not have trade value. But maybe, and you see this sometimes in the preseason, a guy pops in a couple preseason games, but he's not going to make your team – but some teams like, hey, I don't want him to hit waivers. I, I, We want him. Here's a late-round pick swap or here's a seventh, whatever the case may be. So, again, you wouldn't get much for him. But if you're going to cut him anyways and some teams like, hey, we'll give you a sixth, give us a seventh in Dom Rob, it's like, okay, I'll make that trade. All right, Jalen Jones, the last one here as um, – they picked him up as a UDFA a couple of years ago, and he's been good. He's been one of your better uh, special teams players, and uh, he is probably your fifth corner right now, your fourth outside guy behind Jonathan Stevenson and Terrell Smith. And Terrell Smith being as good as he was as a rookie, a great CB4, that could do in Jalen Jones. Like I, I think Josh Blackwell gets the nod over him because he can play nickel, so he's your backup nickel uh, and Greg Stroman is on this team too. He could push for a spot. So 
Jalen Jones could be a guy right on the bubble, and since you have so many corners that you like, you know, maybe you trade him for, 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 for a piece. Now, I, again, like if he's a core special teams guy and you're only going to get like a seventh, you probably just keep him. But with Terrell Smith being a solid player, it kind of makes Jalen Jones expendable at this point in time. All right, there you go. Five Bears trade candidates. Name a player that you think the Bears should trade. Drop his name in the comment section down below. Maybe I'm forgetting somebody. You're not going to trade any of your high-value players at this point. Um, you know, maybe at the trade deadline if this team's struggling, but hopefully that's not the case, knock on wood. Uh, but uh, if there's someone on the edges there, uh, you know, roster bubble guy that you think the Bears should try to trade, let me know who that is. All right, appreciate everybody for tuning in. My name is Harrison Graham. We continue to plug out content on a daily basis. Thanks for your support. Hit that sub button, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.